our Salesforce start shape is configured. Remember, our goal is to write any new records to our database. So we need to set up and configure our endpoint database connector. Let's discuss how this relates to all forms of database integration. The database connection allows you to connect to any database solution supporting a JDBC driver. Many database solutions offer downloadable JDBC drivers, which can be located through a quick Google search or directly through a database provider. The goal for this session is to read write records from a demo organization tracking system. MySQL, which is a popular open source database, will be used as the database for this training. Let's discuss the core options of this database connector. It's the main component containing all information needed to connect to a single database instance. Like any connector, it's a combination of two components, the connection or the where, which is the database type, location, and user login, and the operation or the how, which houses a read or write statement or a stored procedure call and the record grouping definition. You can establish connectivity to any database instance by creating a reusable database connection component requiring the following configurations. The database URL is a read-only field for the JDBC URL, which is populated as other values in the connection window are entered. The driver type dropdown allows you to choose one of the pre-supplied package types, SQL, MySQL, Oracle, or Custom. The username field identifies the database username. The password field identifies the database user password. The host specifies the number or IP address of the database server. And the port controls the port on which to send traffic or connect to the database server. For example, 1433 for SQL, 3306 for MySQL. Database name is the name of your database. The additional options allow you to append items at the end of the database URL. Usually these are name value pairs, such as instance name, and are separated by semicolons. The class name field for standard database types is the read-only Java class name of the JDBC driver. To establish connectivity to a custom database, you must provide the class name, which is a configurable field defining the Java class name of the JDBC driver. So refer to the JDBC vendor documentation for this information and the connection URL is required for the JDBC URL syntax to identify items such as host name, port, or other fields you can structure in the required format based on vendor documentation. We're going to complete exercise seven together as a walkthrough. This will only take a minute since all we're doing is we're going to look at the database connection component that is already loaded into the process. As with the Salesforce connection, remember that the database connection is already configured with the appropriate credentials so you don't need to make any changes to the connection settings. So back in our platform, you can see here's our database connection. So we have the connector type is database, the action is send, and then here's the pre-configured connection that we have for you. So if we click on the pencil, the edit button, you can open it up and see that it is pre-configured for you and you do not have to make any changes. Through exercise seven, you saw the walkthrough where we viewed the database write connector. Next, we're going to start talking about the connectivity testing. Similar to how we use the Salesforce connector components to test connectivity, we can use the database connector components and the Atom to ensure successful connectivity to our database instance. First, highlight statement and select dynamic insert from the type dropdown. Then click on the blue import wizard button to open an explorer-like tool built to expose the database tables. Select the Atom or Cloud with access to your database, and then select the connection component containing the login credentials. The Atom Sphere will then authenticate the database login, and in the event there is a long period where no connectivity is confirmed, be sure to double check your network access and your connection settings. A successful outcome will include a list of available tables to integrate. Just like the read, the database write profile or send can be viewed as a container for your statement definition. In the Profile section, you can statically or dynamically define write statements against tables or stored procedure inputs. Or you can use the Import Wizard to dynamically pull tables, and you can auto-list the columns with field types. To access the Import Wizard, you click on the plus Create a New Component icon to the right of the Profile field. The Operation also defines the Commit options, which ultimately determine how the statements will be batched and executed against the database. The main option dropdown will commit statements based on a certain row 
or the statement sets defined in the profile. We can leave the default here because we want the SQL to be executed based on the test data mapped into the profile. The batch count works in conjunction with the commit option to specify the interval or leave at zero to indicate there's no limit. Leaving the default is fine for use in our case here. Now I'm going to demonstrate exercises eight and nine. In exercise eight, we're going to create a database write operation. And in exercise nine, we're going to create the database write profile. So the database write operation identifies how to commit the SQL transaction and houses the database field sets, which are structured in the profile component, resulting in a database profile that we can be used later in our map shape. So next to the operation in the database connector, if we click on the create button, we can open a new tab. In the name window at the top, we're going to want to name it org insert. In the commit options section, we can accept all of the default values as they appear here. So we can hit save. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start exercise nine now, which is creating a database write profile. So we're going to use a dynamic insert to define the field set for the customer table to pull the database server and auto list all the table field names and types. The quickest way to dynamically build the SQL based insert from the XML records mapped from Salesforce is using a dynamic insert. So under the options tab, we can create a new component to create a new profile. So clicking on the plus arrow to create a new component. And in the new tab, we're going to name this customer insert. Under the data elements tab here, you're going to see the statement. We're going to want to highlight statement. And then in the drop down window next to type, we're going to change this at, to dynamic insert. And after we've done that, after we've highlighted statement and clicked on dynamic insert, we're going to want to import the data. So it's the blue import button in the upper right corner. So we're going to browse using our Boomi cloud. And then we're going to choose our connection. Again, the MySQL connection that we have preloaded for you. We can leave schema filter and object filter as default. And we're going to hit next. Under choose a table, we're going to highlight the customer table. And then we're going to choose next. Under the choose columns when it comes up, we're going to select all. And then we're going to click next and finish. And now we can save and close save and close and hit OK. And you'll see now that we've created a database profile, our customer insert profile under our component explorer. So now it's your turn to complete exercises eight and nine.